Hello, dear. Hi, um, I just wanted to talk to someone, really. Yeah? Are you experiencing stalking at the moment? Yeah. Okay, so we're a high risk service, so um, what I'll do is I'll just get some information from you, and then if you think you're. He was turning up everywhere that we went, he was threatening us, like we, we were absolutely petrified. I started getting like desperate. I just don't feel safe. I want my life back. There's an invisible and invasive crime that's destroying people's lives. Sorry. The police might term it as harassment. We'd use the word stalking. This film follows Paladin, a national independent charity in the UK which fights to protect victims of stalking. We get like 40 missed calls a day. Oh my God. The stalking became out of control and three people who live in fear every day of their lives. I'm just walking and she's coming. And their journey through the criminal justice system that often fails them. I know if I stay in my current address, I'm going to end up dead. I'm sick of it, Melissa. I know you I really are. Am. I told the police. They're supposed to help you, aren't they? Any part of happiness that's supposed to be in our lives has literally been torn away. Just wonder when it's going to end. It'll be quicker if I get hit by a bus and it will stop. Are you OK? <laughs> I'm just so worried. Good afternoon, Paladin. Yeah, I'm a caseworker. Bear with me one moment. I'll just get a third document. So we support clients that we think are at high risk of serious harm or even homicide. OK. Are you safe speaking on the phone that you've called from? Is it the same phone? A 2017 government report into stalking has revealed nationwide failings in the way police and the Crown Prosecution Service respond to stalking allegations and offences. It said to you, I'm going to shoot you and your husband. OK, so you reported it to the police. Okay. No police forces in the UK have dedicated stalking units. So we've got a plan of action. It's a very long list, but we'll... Um... Set up four years ago and staffed by a specialist team of domestic abuse caseworkers and former police and probation staff, Paladin advises victims on gathering evidence and lobbies the police to take action. And they're aware that they can log it and report They know when risk is not identified, stalking can lead to murder. They can't leave their details. The restraining order is not robust enough. This is really not going to protect him at all. Agreed. We work with the emergency services to make them aware of the risks. Sometimes police are not aware of the risks. So we try to put in um, advice, safety planning, liaising with multi-agencies. And if you all work together, we can make that difference. We can save lives. You got a mouse, a dead mouse, through the post. Yeah, horrible. Right, I've got the picture now of the mouse up on my screen, so, yes. Yeah, Alison has been trying to get the police to take action on her victim Carly's case for the last two years. Yeah. I saw, like, a brown package with my name on it, but then I saw, like, a little speck of blood, and so I just mm. gently kind of opened the top mm. and, and saw it and screamed and threw it down. It must have been really frightening. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it's it's like she's stepping up the ante and she's escalating. Yeah, Alex swears it's her handwriting. Oh, really? One in five women and one in ten men will experience yeah. stalking at some point in their lives. The background to this case is that my victim, Carly, mm. is going out with Alex, mm. and that's her boyfriend. Yeah. And Alex's ex-girlfriend is the stalker. Nice. Um, so it's a revenge stalking case. She has got this real vengeance and grievance about him having a new girlfriend. I mean, she's unable to move on. Two years later, she's unable to move on. Since she's been stalking me, when something happens, like, whole body trembles with, like, fear and anxiety. I've never met her, never spoken to her. She can't get over her ex, which is my partner. So ever since she found out that we were dating, I've been targeted. 
30-year-old Carly and her boyfriend Alex have been a couple for two years and recently bought a house. We moved a few months ago because we were being stalked and we wanted to live in peace. You know, we've done everything we can to keep our address secret, but it was just a waste of time because she found us anyway. Holly just had this gut feeling that something was coming. Um, she'd been saying for days, something's coming, I can feel it, I know it. We knew instantly who would do that. I called the police to report it. You know, everything so far has been a game of cat and mouse. I think the only way it can be taken is that they're the cat with the mouse. Carly in particular is the mouse, and the fact it's dead, that, you know, is that a death threat? I don't think the police are taking it seriously. Like, what measures are being put in place to protect me now? I don't have a panic alarm. I have cameras up that I put in myself that they didn't provide. I'm having to protect myself and nobody's listening. Yeah, I'm really frustrated because the response from police is minimal. She's probably close on, I don't know whether it will be 60 reports to police. It feels like it's perhaps not sitting at the right level now. We yeah. need to address that and bring that to their attention perhaps a bit more carefully. And if we've seen a comparable pattern of behaviour in a yeah. case which ended in a multiple stabbing, the then, case. you know, we can't ignore that. That has no. to be taken into account. Next steps, it's about really working with the police in terms of what they're going to do, are they going to arrest yeah. her, what's going yeah. to happen next. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right, no OK. The Dead Mouse is the latest in a sustained stalking campaign preying on Carly's passion in life, cats. All the cards I've received from her, anonymous cards, they've been a big cat staring at a little goldfish. Her being the big cat and I'm being the little goldfish or the little mouse that she's, like, hunting. We've sealed our letterbox up because we were worried that she was going to poison my cat. A couple of weekends ago, we woke up to the neighbour knocking on our door to say, someone had thrown paint over my van. It's a cat charity. Like, we save cats, we rescue cats. Carly has received messages which show the stalker has investigated every aspect of her life. It says, hey, cat lady, you disgusting human being. You're ugly inside out. Desperate, immoral, had their own mother abandon them, probably can't blame her. She slates me about not being brought up by a mother and how I'm not a good enough person because I'm, I've never had a mother's love. And that's quite a nasty thing to say. P.S. Carly, if you have a deposit for a house, you have money for your nicotine-stained hair, your scabby dog, kisses. She's targeted my nan, my granddad, my dad, my stepmom, my sister, my two best friends. She's never going to leave me alone. It's never going to. It's never going to stop. I hate the fact that someone hates me that much, that, so much that she wants to ruin my life. Good morning, Paladin. Good morning, it's Imre Martin speaking. Hello, Imre. Um, I understand that you've experienced stalking and the perpetrator is due for release on Thursday, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. The police called me and they told me she still want to harm me. You know, I was told she want to still kill me. So, bear with me, Imre, is that correct? That police said that she still wants to harm you, she still wants to kill you? Yes. 31-year-old Imre Marton has been stalked for the last four years by a complete stranger. You know, she told me we should be together. She said she's in love. Okay. Do you think that she believes that she's in a relationship with you? Yes, but she's just a stranger. 
at the beginning she did not even know my name and she just came up with a name she called me George Are you very frightened? Yes, yes I am Imre's long-term stalker has been in prison for harassment, but she's being released in three days. My favourite driver, hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? At first, Imre thought his stalker was just another passenger. I saw her on the bus. She travelled a lot. She started to do, like, round trips, travelling nowhere. You know, first I thought that she just be bored. Once she asked me out for a date, I was a bit shocked and uh, I was really polite. I said to her, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. I have a girlfriend. The thing is, you know, when I said no, she started to cry. That was the, the beginning of this nightmare. Unemployed 22-year-old Charlie Howells advances, soon turn to threats. So I'm just walking and she's coming. She's a dangerous girl. She told me that if I'm not going to be with her, she's going to kill me. She said, I know your name, your address, your number, your date of birth, your email address, your car registration all the times and the routes of the buses. Good morning. Imre's stalker even posed as his girlfriend to get information about his whereabouts from his colleagues. We could have a couple of incidences a day when it got really bad. It, it was just crazy. She was just everywhere. She would know where he was going to be, what duties he was going to be on. I can remember that time at Digcot, where we got the phone call and she wouldn't get off the bus. Yes. And we actually grabbed him once, um, and he had to push her away to, to basically escape from her. Left the bus, bus of people there and ran down to the police station, so he must have been petrified. I wanted someone to speak to Imre's boss, um, because there's no workplace safety planning at the moment. Um, and he's riding the same bus route, the same car park that she's aware of. Everything's the same. Paladin caseworker Rosie is worried for Imre's safety and wants to know what Thames Valley Police are going to do to protect him. Um, I'm looking for a police officer who's taking over the case. We're just trying to intercept and put some interventions in. But hazard a guess she's going to go straight for those places that's known to her. Over the last four years, Imre has reported Charlie Howells more than 100 times and made 40 different witness statements. Instead of being charged with stalking, she was only served with restraining orders. There are a lot of statements here, restraining orders, not to enter Oxford Centre, not to travel on, on the buses, do not contact me. You know, she breached all of them, you know. In her mind, you know, she, she truly believes I'm with her and, you know, doesn't understand why I'm calling the police, why I'm not walking with her on the street, why I'm running away, why I'm, you know, not acting like a boyfriend. She has serious issues in her head. 24-7, more than four years, all about me. And that is really bad. Charlie Howells was found guilty of breaching an existing restraining order and sent to prison for two years. Paladin can't understand why she's being released after only serving four months. Yesterday, some information came to light. Mm -hmm. In prison, the perpetrator has been concocting a plan to harm Imre, and she's actually got an accomplice on board. 
Okay, that so, is very worrying. It is. And this is literally all that he's been given. The police told me about the attack plan, plus the officer mentioned they might stab me. This has only just come to light now, literally. Do we know if the person that she's in cahoots with, that she's teamed up with, is, is now out? That person is already out. She's got an accomplice on board. We don't know where this person is, where they're coming from, what this person looks like. We don't even know details of the plan. This is very, very serious, very serious situation. We haven't updated the last week. So what I'll put is... How does she know my surname, my fake name for yeah. work, and also my Twitter account for work? <laughs> Carly and Alex are keeping a log of the letters and cyber-stalking incidents. 33, 34. 34 pages. We've, we've lost count the number of incidents now. The stalker put an e-card up and it says, um, ladies do not start fights, but they can finish them. She's tagged her mother in it. Diane Carter, yes, yes, we can. They're saying we've started the fight, but they're going to finish it. A year ago, they discovered their stalker's mother, Diane Carter, is also involved. If Diane wasn't involved, I don't think it would have got to this stage. She's the one that does all, all the, the research into our lives. Probably feed each other information, and it probably gets them angry, and then they start plotting what they're going to do next. It makes my heart pound whenever I see um, something on their Facebook. I know some people will say, uh, why are you looking? Well, it's actually Paladin have advised me to look because it puts the case together quite well and to get more evidence that it is them because they regularly rant about us on there. There you go, next event. So is he talking about your daughter? Just looking at one of the perpetrator's Facebook page. Carly Stalker is 29-year-old Poppy Carter. She's also the mother of Alex's son, who he's only met once. They broke up before he was born. She continually uses her little boy to make her look like, you know, she's just a mum, just your everyday mum. So you go from your innocent child who is sitting on a kitchen work surface, and that's really lovely, and then right underneath you go, straight to never, never kick me when I'm down because when I get back up, you're fucked, which is a direct threat to the victim. And then we've got the mum, Diane, in the, in the mix as well, the suck it up bitch. Yes, they're doing it in the indirect sense, so the messages don't say their names on them, so they're trying to be clever. But then we know that the cat thing is always directed to Carly because she works with cats. I hope that the police have seen this um, and I think I'll just check with them that they have because it's, it's, it's very obvious who this is directed at. In Oxford, Imre's stalker is out of prison and he's been told she has a plan to stab him. The police were here yesterday they know she's a threat. They are going to patrol this place, checking on me. And uh, the officers mentioned the knife attack is the most popular way. That's it. So if I put a big coat on, you know, it's still not comfy, but I think it's much better to wear this than pulling out a knife from your stomach, you know? She's going to have a curfew at night, regular reporting to staff during the day. Charlie Howells has been released to a bail hostel 180 miles away in Lancashire. She is on licence, mm -hmm. so obviously she'll have conditions. It'd be good to know what those conditions are. Um, and perhaps we can put some recommendations in, so that she will be managed by probation. If we can map out how long it would take her to get from where she is now to Lancashire. where he is now, 
Houston and Oxford. Concerns are with this that either she's going to go straight round there and cause him serious harm or just continue stalking him at that level, if not escalate it. And the reason why I think that um, this could escalate it is that she may well now feel aggrieved by Imray that, hey, you gave evidence against me, you kept reporting me, you, you, you. He's feeling that there is almost no way out from this. In Carly's case, Alison believes Hertfordshire police should be pursuing a stalking charge. Mm. Dog feces through their letterbox. Mm. Carly's car keyed on her birthday. And now we're at the stage of dead mice arriving in the post. What concerns me is we've had consistent fixated behaviour now for two years and a lot of notes saying police couldn't do anything. But this is a safer neighbourhood team sergeant who's responding and I would see this now as a matter for CID. A perfect case of not having the dots joined, not understanding fixation, not understanding stalking. It's a high-risk stalking case and if they don't understand that, they, they might not get the cumulative risk. What I will do is provide you with some support a bit nearer to the time around the court as well, as you've been a witness. Um... How did Luton do over the weekend? I did one, three months. Have you been to Watford then, Carly? Yeah, once. Once. A long time. Never now. go again. It's all the foul <laughs> language. <laughs> yeah, you're saying see you next Tuesday and everything. Oh. Hi, Mark. How have you been doing today? OK, you. Carly's family are desperate to bring years of attacks to an end. Yeah. Vandalised my dad's car. She's vandalised my van. She sent hate mail through. Every week there was something. I was afraid to be at home on my own. I'm nearly 60 years of age. I don't need hate mail from a 20-odd-year-old. The stalkers showed their perverse dedication when they unearthed the 30-year-old family secret. Hand-delivered. It was hand-delivered. I, I thought it was a wedding invitation to start with or something, in a coloured envelope. When I opened it up... I got my son's number on. Sorry, I don't... David, what a great role model you are. That explains a lot. And the thing is, I haven't seen my son. It wasn't my son's fault. Was, this was down to me since he was seven. He's now 36 years of age. Nobody knew about that. You see, even some of the family members didn't know anything about it. Something I kept to myself. I don't think I, I won't ever get over that. What kind of person would do that? Sorry. It's been a hard part of somebody's life, that is, without somebody sending malicious, unnecessary... Seems amazing how the police have let it go on for so long without actually doing anything. Seems like she can do as she likes. Yeah. And she's got the law on her side. Never relax, you know. It's just constant in your mind. Sweet dreams. Okay, darling. I hear her walking about, you know, opening doors. I keep thinking, I wonder if she's put the window alarm on. The psychology of somebody like him that's cowardly and creeps about in the dark. That's the stuff nightmares are made of. Every night, single mom Melissa Thompson sleeps on the sofa in her kitchen by her CCTV. I have my crowbar and that stays 
around the back of my pillow, around the back of the settee. It's the only way I'll sleep if I know that if something did happen and he did actually come in this house, that I've got a chance of stopping him getting anywhere near my mum or anywhere near my son. Melissa lives with her mum, Edith, and her 13-year-old son, John. They think they are being stalked by Melissa's ex-boyfriend. But these things, they've sort of outgrown themselves, haven't they? There'll be a lot of compost this year. Ex-partners make up 57% of all stalking cases. I thought he was a very nice man, polite, had a good job, you know. So I thought, she's all right here, you know, this is the one. And then he gradually wanted to take over control, and she wouldn't have that. But I should get plenty of seed pods off that one. At first, I just took it as a breakup, and he was having trouble dealing with it, and I thought it had sort of calmed down. I just wouldn't answer his phone calls, I wouldn't answer his texts. Then he'd start ringing me on withheld numbers, so we blocked withheld numbers. The night he turned up banging on the window, out here, I just said to John, my mum, get upstairs, stay up there, lock the door. And I was on the phone to the police. Um, and he's banging, carry on. My son's upstairs, terrified. Anyway, two police women came, and that's when my mobile started ringing. And she said, is that him? I went, oh, yeah. So she answered it, and he ranted and raved at her. She said, if you don't stop, we're going to come and arrest you. After six months of abusive phone calls and sometimes up to 30 texts a day, Melissa's ex was served with a police information notice, or PIN, warning him further behaviour would be considered an offence. That's when it started to get really sinister. All this damage was happening. Somebody pulled all the wiring from a hot tub in the back garden. Um, my windscreen wipers had been pulled off my car and somebody's knocked some stakes into the ground so it would have damaged the lawnmower. Notes on my back door, ranting letters. Somebody's coming close to the house. Every time I rang the police about an incident or a letter had been dropped on the door, all they said to me was, have you got CCTV? When they didn't do anything because they just said, have you got no proof? Got no proof. We splashed out the CCTV, which we couldn't really afford, but we, we've had to do it, really. This covers the drive, because I've had a lot of damage to my car. Um, and the other one covers the back. It's the quietest part of the garden, and also it can't be viewed from the street or any of our neighbours. Over recent weeks, Melissa and her mum have become more fearful. A few nights ago, a torch appeared up the garden. It was dark, couldn't see who was holding the torch. And it moved about a bit. Then it shone straight at the house as if to say, I'm here, I'm here, you know. And then he went. It's frightening. Fancy crawling around somebody's garden. Melissa hasn't seen her ex at the house since the police notice. But she can't think who else would be coming into her garden. I think he's staying away from the house so that he can't be seen. So it's sort of, I'm still here, and you can put cameras up, but that's not going to stop me. I'll just find a way around it. Isn't so, it ridiculous, yeah. really, this day and age? I tell you we want on the job. Frost off television. <laughs> or who's the other one? The big... Cracker. Cracker. He'd have it solved in a couple of days. It's clearly a person. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, so that's definitely torchlight, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. He likes to come to the property at night. Ex-intimate stalkers are revenge stalkers. They are not accepting of the separation. At the point of separation, that's when they start to stalk. It's such dedication to going to somebody's back mm. garden at midnight. That revenge motivation is essentially based on control and close down their world, isolate them, affect their job, affect the way they're thinking. It's 
13 months and it's just not stopping. I could get this revengeful, furious ex, but after all this time, somebody who's willing to spend that kind of time hunting you down is just frightening, it's frightening. So I have to drive past his house every morning on the way to work. There's been a few times when he's seen my car, he's actually followed me to work. If a car comes up behind me, or if there's the same car follows me for any length of time, you're thinking, they're still behind me. Why are they still behind me? He tried to control me through the relationship and just came up against the brick wall. And now what he's doing is just continue to try and control me. He wants me to my knees, and once he's got me there, he's won. And so I can't allow that to happen. I've got to just get on with it. Imre Stalker has been out of prison for just six days. She's banned from entering Oxford, but last night an anonymous note was left on his door. I know if I stay in my current address, I'm going to end up dead. Imre has fled his home and checked into a hotel. says, keep dreaming, shine like a star, never give up, you are your own, beautiful. Beautiful, she called me beautiful so many times. Those are her thoughts. Probably her cellmate wrote this down. This morning, police finally gave Imre a picture of his stalker's cellmate who they believe is plotting with Charlie Howells to stab him. The emotional toll that it's taking on you is very high. I don't want to go back home till she's behind bars. I'm just not safe. Yeah, I feel for you. I feel that anxiety. I'm still shaking. OK, so this, the situation is what's abnormal and what's not right. But the way that Very concerning react. level of fixation here. It's obsession and it's, you know, it's hunting that victim down. Completely controlling their life. Hertfordshire Police, please. Yes, it might be someone who knows the case, Carly Bradbury's case. I'm her stalking advocate. The police have finally arrested Carly's stalker, Poppy Carter. But Paladin believe the Crown Prosecution Service are looking at the wrong charge. I just wanted to speak to someone who might know why the word harassment instead of stalking has been mentioned at, um, with Poppy's arrest. Hopefully we can change it to a stalking charge. I don't want it uh, dumbed down to harassment because that's how it feels um, when they overlook the fixation um, and just treat it as a nuisance behaviour. just don't understand the reluctance to call it stalking because criminal damage and harassment could be one-off incidents. This is an obsession. It's a mental health thing. Just because she's got arrested on Friday, it doesn't mean to say she's going to stop because she's fixated and obsessed. Like, she needs to be convicted for stalking and get the mental health um, resources that she needs. Just wonder when it's going to end, how it's going to end. It's not going to end. You can't take a lifetime with this. It would be quicker if I get hit by a bus and it will stop.
Poppy Carter's recent arrest appears to have triggered a backlash from her mother. So the stalker's mother, I don't understand what she's put on it. She's put a, a baby scan up of 20 weeks pregnant. What the hell was that about? Was, uh, she's put in what a good family you are, um, breaking up with her daughter when she was 20 weeks pregnant. That's what it's about. Mm. When was that posted? Four hours ago. Just ignore it. Oh, she's still going on about the same things, like three years down the line. Carly, can you put your phone down now? Because you know how it's going to make you feel. Why can't you ignore it? Because it's it's because I I can ignore it, but the fact is, when they're doing angry rants like this, I know that they're going to do something, and that's what worries me. Because every time this happens, it something happens after that. So. But you can't stop that. Yeah, but I it doesn't stop me from worrying about it. You can't just switch off. You can switch off. I can't. It's me that tries to pick you up when these things happen. The only person that can pick me up is the police doing their job properly. That's the only people that can pick me up. And what's the reason behind the cameras? Just a bit of home security? Well, I'm being stopped. Oh. It's been going on for about 14 months now, so... Well, hopefully these will do the trick. I mean, also we'll get them set up, but they will pick up anybody walking from, obviously, this direction. Additional cameras are being installed in Melissa's garden. She and her mother are becoming more scared in the run-up to bonfire night. If he's going to come over... I'm on edge all the time. You know, it sounds ridiculous, I know, but... I'm always on edge, if you know what I mean. I can't relax. We've got this camera here. I think he's waiting till the 5th of November and he's coming to set fire to something. I've just noticed something that yeah. I find a tad worrying. That, that's been broke on purpose. That would fire pretty quick. Yeah. Fueling their anxiety, a mutual friend says she's heard Melissa's ex talking suspiciously about bonfire night uh, and is worried for her safety. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame it doesn't come in the daytime, isn't it, really? Cause yeah, it is. There's no way now we can get down the garden. The whole boundary to boundary is covered. Yeah. Oh, hi, Melissa. It's Alison from Paladin. Hiya. I just wondered, and did you call the police? Yeah. What did they say? They said, okay. I don't think we'll need to take a statement or anything, but we'll, we'll get back to you. They didn't. I'll see if there's any more pushing I can do with police. It's... I mean, just because he said bonfire mm. night, mm. I mean, it's necessarily going to be. Yeah. He could, could leave just it and be wait that threat. He's patient, yeah. and that's the worst thing. Yeah, like you say, he might be trying to create this level of fear for you. Yeah. And then this build up, and then not do anything on that day. You just yeah. reach a point where you get sick to death or yeah. try and do your own shadow, and you yeah. just think, oh, for God's sake, just do whatever you're going to do and get on with it. Yeah. The firemen have given us safety ladders. What a carrier. I don't know how they expect me to climb over a window sill onto a safety ladder, but I don't say anything. Like you say, you don't know if it's just an idle threat to frighten you or if he is actually going to do something. You, you don't know. No, I know. You don't know what he's going to do. Well, I've run police and told them. <laughs> what did they say? Wait till well, it happens. They're, spo they're supposed to log it. And then when I've rung back later, nobody's got any log of it. This is silly. This is absolute silly. Yeah, and I said, I just want it logging because otherwise, when I ring up and I say, something's been set fire to you, and say, well, why, why do you think it's him? What makes you think it's him? Police have basically turned around to you and said, well, let's wait and see if it happens. Well, well, well when well, it happens... said that. No, yeah, they've not in, so that, many, yeah. in so many words they've said it to you. And when it happens, it's too late. Honestly, I've reached that point now where I'm just numb. Just do whatever you're going to do and get on with it.
Thames Valley police have made arrangements for Imre to move into a safe house. I don't see that much daylight anymore. So, you know, I, I hate this curtain. I have to have this because uh, that is always closed, so no one can see in. And uh, I'm, I'm not happy about the front door. Uh, I'm planning to cover the glass. My personal life is shrinks. And, uh, you know, this is the only way I can feel safe. If I do those changes, like no more sunlight. <laughs> like a little prison. But it, it's safe and I would like to keep it that way. Alison and Catherine are traveling to Oxford with an important update for Imre. This will be the first time they've met him face to face. Even if the perpetrator is in custody, yeah. it doesn't make a difference. You've been programmed yeah. Yeah. to be hypervigilant yeah. because that's your survival response. I can't imagine that he's sleeping. Um, it would be useful to explore that a bit more. Hello. Hello. Nice Hi, to bye. meet you finally. Nice to meet you, Ray. How are you settling in? Oh, slowly. It's much safer. No one knows about it. Okay. I did not even tell to my boss I'm living here. Okay, that's so... good. I've got some news. Um, it's good news. She is being recalled, so that means she has to serve the remainder of her sentence. Um, we've had a long discussion about when would that mean possibly she might get out. So the end of her sentence would take her to August 2017. So, I mean, how do you feel? Everybody thinks I'm like a strong male mm -hmm. and I can deal with this, but I cannot, you know. Yeah. You know, I lost my girlfriend because of this, everything, you know. So it is difficult, you know, still. Of course it is, I know. And I, you know, I just wish I had the magic wand as well for you, because I, you know, why should you have to lose your girlfriend and lose all of this. You know, actually, you know, if I'm alone, I'm always like, like oh, this. I'm so sorry. You know, I don't want to show it no. to my colleagues, my friends. No. It's too much. Anyway, anyone no. would feel awful like this. This is not something that you should have to be living through. You're human and you want to have a relationship and you want to have friends. But the thing is, you know, if I have a girlfriend and start a family, she will be out one day. And what she's going to do, you know, she's so messed up in her, so, so crazy in her mind. With short sentences and no psychological treatment in prison, Imre lives in fear that his stalker will re-offend on her release. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care. All right, have a good journey then. They're always hitting me when I'm at home late. I have those good memories when I used to have my girlfriend. I still, you know, I really love her. But, you know, she had enough, and I, I can totally understand that. It's just not right at all, you know. You know, it's just... Uh, I don't want to cry again. <laughs> well, it, it just, it just bad. Poppy Carter is still on bail for criminal damage and harassment, while police gather more evidence. So after the uh, stalker was at the police station last week for her bail conditions, um, her mum started again on her Facebook rants. Um, there's been quite a number of them. So the first one, she put up an e-card saying, I'll wait. 
which I think she's waiting for what the outcome is and then she'll start up again and she put hashtag dirty rotten scum she put up another e-card saying all in good time my pretty from the wicked witch so again it's just more threats I think these posts were put up out of anger I think she couldn't help herself unless she's stalking someone else then who, who else would these be aimed at she's absolutely off her head Sick of it, Melissa. I know I you really are. Am. I know you are. Well, so am I. I'm holding on, holding on. It's been going on for so long. I oh, know. We used to have a quiet, peaceful life. It's bonfire night. Melissa, her mum and her son John are on edge. They can sneak round the back of the shed, just pour some petrol in there and then just throw a match and run. It's next to Paul's buildings. It's sure to spread across. If he sets fire to that. If he sets fire to that, Paul will shoot him. How many fish cakes? Two. Two. Did you hear anything at all last night? Any bangs Nothing. or rustlings? Or... Nothing. Melissa checks last night's CCTV. A quiet night. Is that good or bad? No, it's good. It's very good. I just want to catch him and get some evidence that the police would actually have to use. I mean, we've had loads of things that could have only been him. He's so patient. But I always said that's the worst thing about it. I'll never know when it stopped. See you later. Love you. Mm. Happy as well. After a two year battle, mm. the Crown Prosecution Service have finally charged Poppy Carter with stalking. Today is a court hearing to determine whether the case will go to trial. I haven't slept hardly in like the last few nights. Just been getting myself in a state about it. Um. I feel sick to the stomach. It's just like the day we wanted for so long to finally get her into court and, you know, get some kind of justice. So I'm feeling nervous about that. Stalking was made a criminal offence in 2012. Yet few cases make it to court. My guess is that she's going to plead um, not guilty today. It's a way of staying in contact with me because it'll be a two-week trial. She'll obviously see me there, I'll have to see her. It's just another way of staying in contact with each other, um, another way to talk to torment me. Alex's stepfather, Kevin, is going into court on Carly's behalf. Mm. Can to come in with us today? No. No? Can't convince no, you? No, I can't. I feel, I feel, I feel sick right. even thinking about it. I can't face her. No, I fully understand, right. but look, change your mind. You want to come in? Yeah, OK, thank you. It's like I'm living an absolute nightmare. I think if she hadn't been arrested after that mouse, it was getting more and more sinister where I would have thought it would have resulted in my murder. Because that's how horror films end, and it feels like a horror film to me. What? Hello, darling. You look upset. Yeah, I think it went the way you thought it would. Not guilty. So she's pleaded not guilty. Um, she hired a private detective, which is quite interesting. That came out for what that day. What the fuck? Yeah. Someone's been following me. Oh, yeah, you and Alex. Uh, that's how she found out where you and Alex live. What yeah. a weirdo. Yep. Who, who hires a private detective to find out? And then she still pleads not guilty? Just own up to it.
The full trial will be in three months. Then Carly will have to face her stalker for the first time to give evidence. Yeah. Even though it's expected, I am really frustrated. Yeah, same. Uh, I can't believe she had a cheek to get a private detective. That was explain how she's got her address, though. I'm in angry mode now. I still suffer with anxiety. I'm still scared about my future, but I'm pissed off of what she's done to me, and I've had enough of it. I'm not standing for it any longer. So, just keep break, to keep throwing it at me because I'm not I'm not going to budge. <laughs> My name's Melissa Thompson. I've had a long-going stalking problem. A policeman with you have fingerprinted a letter. There's been a breakthrough in Melissa's case. Police have found fingerprints on one of the anonymous letters left at her house. These could reveal the identity of her stalker. My ex-partner had refused to have his fingerprints taken. I'd like some information on whereabouts we are with it right now. OK, thank you. I don't have any faith in the police now because they just don't seem to take it seriously. When you read the whole content of the letters, it mentions me taking his daughter dancing, all sorts of personal things that only he could have known. One paragraph jumps from, like, one nice thing to one rant to another rant. Oh. Not like I did nothing for you more than anyone else in your past, I do believe. Do you ever regret meeting me? Wish I'd never met you. And then it goes from that to, like, I do hope you've got your health problems sorted out. Like that policeman said, that's saved on a computer somewhere. So if they took his computer in the first place... They would have that. Then it would be that hard would evidence. Be proof. That, that would be proof. proof, yeah. And then they could have charged him with stalking. Caseworker, and we can go from there. Seven weeks later, the CPS granted police the right to arrest Melissa's ex to force him to give his fingerprints. Paladin are hoping for a match. Looks like I've got a reply from um, the OIC for Melissa's case. So it says, Hi, the suspect is arrested and denied sending a letter. Unfortunately, his fingerprints were not found to be on the letter. Due to no further lines of inquiry, the suspect was released with no further action. I hope this helps. It is disappointing. If there are no fingerprints on the letters and they don't match, they don't match his, then we can't deny that fact. So we just have to, and CPS and police have to work with what they've got. And in this instance, there isn't. There isn't anything that's concrete. But this is the frustrating thing. You, know, you really want to start to see more prosecutions coming through. Often stalkers don't even get a criminal conviction. And I say, it's your ex-partner that's been stalking you, am I right? This is why we say they steal lives and take lives. You know, I have a case where it's been 17 years that have been stolen of that person's life, and that's not, you know, how, how can that be fair and just and... How can that person and their family be expected to live with that for such a long time? For Melissa and her family, it's hard to accept that their case has been dropped. I suppose I just feel a bit numb that I've lived this hell for 14 months. And he can just walk on, and carry on like it's just not happened. But the after effects it'll leave on us will be a lot different. Campaigning for longer sentencing All right. for stalkers. So what seems to be a pattern in so many of these cases? Imre and Paladin are attending a stalking event in London to raise awareness of how victims are repeatedly failed by the criminal justice system. The National Stalking Helpline respond to calls from victims of stalking. 
If the police were doing their job properly and more effectively, then half those people may not even come to the National Stalking Helpline. So I think this is an Imre wants to share the catalogue of police errors that gave his identity away to his stalker. I'm so fed up calling the police and wasting my time to make those statements. It just, it goes nowhere. I think the system is not able to help me at all. Uh, what happened was she got a warning from the police and uh, they wrote down my name on that paper, that, on that warning notice, and she found out my, my full name. The police gave the stalker um, Imre's details on the harassment warning. The, the police inadvertently aggravated yes. the stalking. She that was then able to access his phone number, his address, everything. I think, you know, my life is, is ruined. You know, I'm going to build up a new life. Even I was thinking about to change my name. Thank you so much, Inre. We really, really hope that today is the start of a process where we can take stalking seriously, that we change attitudes to stalking. I need to deal with this. I already have some plans for the future, and uh, I'm definitely, definitely going to reach them because I know that I will be safe again and uh, my life will be much, much better. For the last four days, the jury in Poppy Carter's trial has been listening to the evidence. Their verdict is expected tomorrow. It's been a horrible week. What if she doesn't get convicted? I am hopeful, but obviously it's in the hands of a jury. I have to decide it now. <sighs> Did you look at her? I could see her in the corner of my eye, and then I looked at her yesterday. It's weird, it's weird after all this time that Kind of the mask is unveiled, and that there she is. Mm. I was expecting this monster, but if you you know if you walk past her in the street, you wouldn't think that she's done all this, would you? No. You wouldn't think it. No, you can't. You can't spot a stalker. <laughs>